Imagine if you lived a hundred years ago. There were no smartphones, no computers, no internet, and no TV. In the last decades, the way we live has evolved more than in the last thousand years. Everything has become more accessible, bigger, closer, and much, much faster. So where does it stop? When do we say, I've had enough? Not today. Because today, we want more. Our lives, plans, businesses, they all deserve more. And with Ethan, we can get more. More speed to conquer. More technology to master. More services to give. More cloud to store. More communication to bring the world even closer. More knowledge to create more. So if they ask you to settle for what you have, don't. How can you, knowing there's so much more out there? Ethan. Good morning, His Eminency and, uh, and our Patriarch, Dr. Sfer, uh, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. Let me start with uh, a confession since I'm at Kirki. I thought it would be uh, relevant. You see, when I was first asked to speak here today, I thought I would talk about something within my comfort zone. My business is my comfort zone. It's very easy for me to speak about my company. But then I thought about it a little more, and I felt that the real reason why I'm here today is not to boast about my company or to promote or to try and sell anyone here. It's about my experience as an Australian Lebanese Maronite who's achieved somewhat the success that we deserve and is very proud of that, about my success in Lebanon and what I've managed to be able to deliver in Lebanon for Lebanon. So let me begin with a little bit of a background as to who we are, otherwise I wouldn't be doing my business and my company any justice. We are Australia's largest privately owned IT company. Uh, we employ over 1,500 people around the world. We turn over in excess of a billion dollars each year. We are the third largest telecommunication operator in Australia. And we also operate in 10 other countries, of which one of them is Lebanon. <coughs> the reason why we decided to invest in Lebanon goes far beyond the statistics and the economic conditions of Lebanon today. You see, we see Lebanon from a different lens. Being an IT and a technology company, we see Lebanon from the lens of innovation. When we first looked at Lebanon, sure all the statistics said, you can find all this on Google, that Lebanon is ranked number four in the world for maths and science, 40% less in terms of its cost for labor than the rest of the GCC, but that's not the reason for investing in Lebanon, not if you're in innovation and if you're in technology. And that's what I'd like to share with you today. The reason for, you know, for investing into Lebanon undoubtedly is because of its human capital, its people. They're the best thing in Lebanon. It's us, Lebanese. And from all corners of the world, we've been very successful. Many, many examples. I'm a very small one of them. But, um, but if you look at innovation, and you look at the key ingredients of innovation, you'll see that one of the most important ingredients is creativity. No one can deny Lebanese are creative. Just look at the fashion as an example. Another key ingredient is your ability to change. Every time I come to Lebanon, I find something new, a new restaurant. Old restaurants become new again. They renovate. Lebanon has this paranoia built in within its people. This is an ingredient for success in business, but more importantly, it's an ingredient for success in innovation and in technology. And that's why you should invest in Lebanon, in innovation and in technology. The other most beautiful thing about investing in technology that we've found and in innovation in Lebanon is that technology is disruptive. So we, we're not too concerned with what's happening politically 
We're not too concerned with what's happening economically because we can manufacture from Lebanon, bypass its challenges and execute globally. And I think that's where the opportunity lies for, for businessmen throughout the world that are interested in investing in Lebanon. I've thanked Sayyidna Antoine Tarabay many times, but I've never thanked him on a scale this big, nor have I thanked the WPF for what they've done for me and for my business. I've now got comfortably over 50 staff in Lebanon, which are really 50 families that we're supporting and growing. And this has all happened over the last five years. We're very proud of this, and I'd like to thank you, Sayyidna, for this, as well as the WPF. But one of the most challenging things that we're currently facing has nothing to do with the Lebanese economy as an Australian business. What we're currently facing as a challenge is our Australian dollar. So there are other variables outside of the Lebanese parameters that are also a challenge. And these are global issues. To be successful, you must overcome these challenges. And this is just one of them. When I first started my business in Lebanon, our dollar was at $1.10. I'm now close to 40% less competitive. But you must give your businesses oxygen. You must give Lebanon oxygen, which is what I've done. I've taken a view over 10 years that the dollar should be at around 75. I did my business economics behind this. And it stacked up. It made sense. So we invested. And we will continue to invest. But the most important thing that we are investing in within Lebanon is its people. And uh, I just want to make that very clear that, you know, people equal innovation. People equal technology. And the people changed Silicon Valley. They changed America. It's the people that changed America. And it all starts from up here. Some of the messages that I've passed on is around investing in Lebanon and, and why I invested were, I guess, commercial. But there is also an emotional reason why I invested in Lebanon. The emotional reason why I invested was also to bring me back to Lebanon. I was born in Australia. My parents are Lebanese. I speak Lebanese. My wife is Lebanese. I found her in my adventures in investing in Lebanon. I've now got two beautiful kids within a space of two years. Don't ask me how that's happened. But thank you, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. But I'm very proud to be Lebanese. And to be Lebanese isn't a one year, isn't a five year business plan. It's a lifetime business plan. I just wanted to finish up on that. I'd like to thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to my journey. And um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Thank you.